Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of What If I Could, where today I will be building a wooden replica of Mario's hammer from Paper Mario and the Origami King. Before we get started, let's take a look at what we're aiming for. Alright, right off the bat, let's get this out of the way. I can already hear it. This thing is made out of paper, explicitly, and not wood. How does it qualify for a spot on this show? To which I would argue, the only distinction between paper and wood is a matter of thickness. So I think it's all above board. And besides, I make all the rules here and don't have to justify myself to anybody. Alright, materials. For wood here, I went with black cherry for honestly no real reason other than the color. After getting our stock down to a few more reasonably sized pieces, it's off to our customary starting point. In order to get our stock as thin and paper-like as possible, we're going to use a technique called resawing. We do this by surfacing a couple of faces on the jointer, and then swapping over to the bandsaw to cut our pieces vertically right down the middle. Once the pieces are nice and thin, it's back to the jointer to clean up a face, then the planer to thickness, and repeat. Tell me those aren't beautiful. To this day, I don't know why, but when you get wood nice and thin, there's something about it that's just the most satisfying thing. The final shape we're trying to recreate here is a, um, uh, let, me, let me check my notes, uh, a tapered octagonal cylinder. So that means there are a lot of angles to keep track of throughout this process. When I make these cuts, I have to make sure that my saw is set to exactly 5 degrees. If it's off at all, the stacking tolerances can get out of hand incredibly fast. Look, we all remember preschool. Everybody knows that the tapered octagonal prism has 16 sides, not including the ends. So we've got some more cuts to make. Since we're going to have to perform every operation in this process 16 times, we're going to want to invest in some time-saving measures. First and foremost, a simple stop can be an incredibly effective tool for making multiples of the same cut. Contrary to popular belief, Measure twice, cut once, is objectively less efficient than measure once, cut 16 times. Because the head of the hammer is thicker at the middle than the ends, we've got to use some clever geometry to make sure it tapers nicely. Use that old enemy, turned reluctant ally, math, to figure out the final dimensions and angles of the faces. Pro tip, this little square and 6 inch ruler might be the two tools I use most in the entire shop. If you're looking to make a very small investment to instantly up the quality and precision of your projects, I would highly recommend picking up something similar. Just like last time, we're going to set up a stop block so that we can make our numerous cuts as quickly and painlessly as possible. I'm noticing a theme. The key difference this time around is that these pieces are small enough that we're now entering what we in the woodworking business call the please don't put your fingers there zone. To get around this, I'm just subbing in a clamp so that my hands can stay far away from the blade right where they belong. And just like that, we've got a nice little set of polygons. Time to join them all together. At this point, it's just a matter of lining up all the pieces and hitting them with a bit of packing tape. This is honestly so fun. I could do this all day. But all good things come to an end eventually. Flip these babies over and we're just about ready for some glue. Apply a liberal amount of glue into the bevels between the pieces. And then buckle up, because you're about to experience one of the greatest joys that woodworking has to offer. Roll the pieces up into a beautiful little octagon. And then take a moment here to breathe a sigh of relief, because somehow, against all odds, all those little angles worked out in the end. Stack the two halves on top of each other and carefully line them up. Once all the corners and edges are where they're supposed to be, go ahead and tape them together so they don't move on us. Now at this point, grab that roll of tape and go absolutely nuts. You kinda can't do too much here. Apply a lot of pressure and just keep taping until this thing basically feels like a solid piece of wood. I know this step seems super hack, but they taught me this at trade school, I promise. We made a bit of a mess out of our work surface with that last step, so let's grab the orbital sander and polish things up. There. Good as new. 
After our hour of glue drying time has passed, it's time to unwrap our little present. Pull that tape off, pop her apart, and we're left with two perfect halves. Now that the outer shells are made, we're going to give this thing a structural skeleton by cutting out a number of octagons with varying diameters and spacing them out evenly inside of the hammer's head for support. You're probably thinking to yourself, cutting out octagons? That sounds difficult. Look, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even be saying this, but I'm going to let you all in on a little secret that geometry teachers have been keeping on the down low for years. Octagons are just squares with the corners cut off, so frankly we have no reason to be intimidated by them. Back to business. The trick here is to once again carefully measure and lay out that first cut, and then set yourself a stop block and lock in that dimension. From there, with your saw set at 45 degrees, it's just cut, rotate, cut, rotate, till you've got yourself a perfect octagon. Told you it wasn't so hard. Once all your support pieces are cut, apply glue to the edges and tamp them down inside the hammer's head. These should be nice and tight because we're relying on a snug pressure fit as our only form of clamping pressure. Repeat the process halfway up the cylinder with a slightly larger octagon, and then once more at the top. I drilled a couple holes in the top pieces exclusively so I'd have something to hold on to while I fiddle around and make sure the edges are nice and flush. And there you have it. We are well on our way here. Once the supports are fully cured, we'll join the two halves together with the all-time classic. Glue. Clamp. Look at that. This is going to work out just fine. Now for the easy part. Let's whip up a handle. We're keeping things simple here and just going with a nice thick piece of black cherry. Quick rip down to size on the table saw. A little sand to get rid of those saw marks and done. See? Easy. The hammer seems to be made up of two different types of wood. Sorry, paper. The main, darker part, which we just made, and the lighter, smushy end bits. For the latter, I'm going with a nice clear alder. I'm using the exact same resaw technique to get this nice and thin, so I'll spare you the details and skip to the good part. Now that we've got the rest of our materials sorted, let's finish off that handle. It's got little caps on the top and bottom, so we'll cut off a couple pieces of alder and glue them to the ends. In the source material, it seems like the caps are ever so slightly askew, and we're going for accuracy here, so although it physically pains you down to every obsessive bone in your body, make sure that when you're gluing them on, they are just out of square. I'm fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Let's... Next one? Next one? We'll take the hammerhead out of the clamps, give it a little once over, and if it passes our visual inspection, we'll move on to attaching the handle. Rather than putting it through the entire hammer, we're just going to cut a couple of slots in the head and then attach the handle ends using dowels. That means our beautiful little handle's getting chopped in two. Drill a hole for the dowel where the handle ends are going to connect to the head, both on the hammer side and the handle side. Then it's just glue, dowel, attach. This thing's starting to look pretty good. All right, last step, the smushy ends. I cut some alder hexagons using our tried and true hexagon cutting technique, and we're gonna wanna go ahead and glue them to the end faces of the hammer. A keen observer might notice that these pieces have their edges cut at 45 degrees, and I'll explain why shortly. Now we have to try and recreate the little folds of paper that peel up from the ends of the hammer's edges, so I've cut out a bunch of small pieces to do the job. This is where those 45 degree angles come into play. The angles on these little pieces are going to connect with the ones on the octagon's edges and make a nice, seamless face. Now, since we've already established ourselves as slaves to accuracy, we're going to painstakingly sketch out every single fold of paper down to the last minute detail. Then we cut the piece out on the bandsaw, clean it up with some sandpaper, and you guessed it, do it 15 more times. Do you ever stop to wonder why we do the things we do? 
Once all the pieces are cut out, it's time to give them a new home. Use our old pal super glue to attach the folds to the octagon's beveled edges. Careful on this one. Super glue doesn't discriminate. It embraces all with open arms, which means it sticks to fingers just as easily as wood. Repeat this step on every edge and watch as all your hard work finally comes together. So is it just me or is this the craziest thing you guys have ever seen? I'm so beyond thrilled with the way this turned out. I love it. Uh, yeah, I just, I can't get over it. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, there is more content like this coming down the pipe. So feel free to hit that subscribe button. If not, no hard feelings. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm gonna go uh, smash the life out of some turtles. I'm just kidding. I'm obviously kidding. I shouldn't, that's a bad.